and then the game just completely turned. They were hanging on, and then we thought they get the winner. It was just incredible drama. But that man there is without doubt. Before when he won the when he won the player of the tournament, when he went over, um, was a really iconic looking picture. I love that one, but like, yeah, it's, it's great to see the greats um, getting what they deserve. Delighted for him, delighted for Argentina. Great images, it took a while to get there with all the presentations. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, fantastic, we can't say any more. Well deserved, Messi to finish your international career. Worthy winners, they were fantastic. You're right, the picture of him where he walks past, where he's collecting the player of the tournament, and he kisses it for the first time, is going to be the iconic image. You were the one, Gary, who uh, found this list, so I'll quickly give it to everybody. Messi has won 10 La Ligas, one mm. Liga 1, seven Spanish Cup, eight Spanish Super Cup, four Champions League, three UEFA Super Cup, three Club World Cup, or I forgot, went one French Super Cup, seven Ballon d'Or, one Copa America, and one World Cup. Wow. Well, I, I, I think the World Cup, I think that, I think him holding that there yeah. probably he gets it over the best. He's the best in his generation for me. I think that tips it for me, and just with that, because that is what I. You don't need a cabinet for all that. You need a lorry to put all those do, men yeah. in. That I, is just extraordinary. I think that cements it for me. Best in his generation. People want to talk about the best ever, but I'm talking about in his generation. Mark, we were just here discussing the noise in this stadium. Just shy of 90,000 people in here. They've just finished the presentation, but they're still out there celebrating. And all of the fans pretty much from Argentina have stayed here. And they've just been incredible this whole tournament from the very beginning. And Karen, when you watch them lift the trophy there, it's kind of easy also to forget the fact that they actually lost their opening game to Saudi Arabia, which at the time was such an exciting game. It felt like the World Cup had really kick-started in that game, hadn't it? It feels a lifetime ago, Laura, especially after this game. I, I feel sick. <laughs> I feel emotionally I've been on a roller coaster, so I don't know how everyone at home feels and equally the players. But you're right, when they lost their opening game, you even kind of question them a little bit. But when you have the character that they do, when you have Messi, well, you can never, ever write them off. And um, it was just a phenomenal finish with a tournament. It was the best game I think I've ever been to, and I apologise to the Lionesses. Um, it was just an absolute privilege because this People game will talk about it for 60, 70 years. It was breathtaking. There was a kind of romance from the beginning, really, with this Argentina side because it was set up in the way it was Messi's last World Cup. So it felt like almost it would be right for him to have this, but they had to fight their way through it. And ever since that game, that loss to Saudi Arabia, they had to keep winning. They had to play knockout football pretty much from the beginning. There were some amazing moments in this World Cup, not just involving Argentina, though. What was your favourite? Um, well, to be fair, I'm not just watching Messi with his kids. Sorry, Laura, but um, wow, what a moment for them. Um, I think all of, his, all of this tournament's been brilliant. Um, I think there's been so many ups and downs, but I still keep going back to this moment, Laura. Um, Messi there with his family because throughout this tournament there was no way that he was ever going to let the fans down or his family or anyone from Argentina that he was always going to go home with that trophy even throughout the game today there was just one person that was always dragging them through and that was him you know of the players at that moment Martinez you know McAllister was brilliant for 80 odd minutes but Messi for me I've never seen anything like it and anyone more human like that, play a live game, unbelievable. It's a footballing nation as well that's been starved of this for, for over 36 years. So to see it come together like this in this World Cup, and with the amount that these fans have travelled and supported, they have been the dominant force in every game yeah. that they've played in. In some of these games, it's felt like it's 95% Argentinian fans. <laughs> it feels richly deserved in that sense, doesn't it? It does, and you know, I wonder where the penalties were right behind the Argentina fans, that was a, a big factor, I think, for the French players. You just saw it, how intimidating it was for them. But, um, look, it's been a privilege. And thank you for being an epic teammate as well. It's been the best experience ever. So I'm so grateful. I am so grateful as well. I have to say this has been the most amazing experience. And to see Lionel Messi win it, after, yep. what, seven Ballon d'Ors, and just to add to his rich collection of medals and trophies, it does feel very, very special, guys. The goalkeeper, mm. but it's, a, it's an unbelievable moment for Argentina. Yeah. Uh, not surprisingly, with a, with a closing ceremony and the gongs being handed out, never really runs to any sort of running order. So we'll just, uh, we'll just keep talking and wait for it all to come together. If you're um, Didier Deschamps, you're thinking that was a tremendous effort. 
But what was going on for 80 minutes? Because we were trying to work out how many of the players were ill this yeah. week. Yeah. Were they flat because they'd had a virus? Yeah. What's going on? But, you can't really say now after that, oh, well, they were all no, ill. But I'd look at it the other way. I think they, they couldn't get going. We, we give, we give Argentina credit for that. Argentina, brilliant team. They've lost one game in the last 40 odd. So they were imposing their style and their physicality on them. They couldn't get, they couldn't get going. But they eventually got going. That's what the sign of a really good team. They, mm. To me, they showed why they're champions today. So I wouldn't be too critical of France. It took them a while to get going. Mm. But in football, you can only have one winner. Today it's Argentina. France, take your medicine. But well done, both teams. I thought they were outstanding. Mm. Particularly when you bear in mind who France <coughs> were missing coming into this. Yeah. No Pogba, no Kante, and Kuka got injured. Benzema, Benzema yeah. theoretically, could have been on the bench. You, clearly, Deschamps didn't want to bring and, him back. And it, and it shows it, the depth in the French squad. That's absolutely, but it looked to me like for 80 minutes, it was a massive problem with that virus. It had taken the energy out of all of them. And they, looked, they looked well off it. They looked like Argentina were cruising to an easy victory and then to come back. Mbappe was absolutely amazing in that last 10, 15 minutes. He yeah. lit up the game and gave us some, give us what we wanted. We wanted that. We were with the virus the last 10 minutes. Yeah, well, that's my point. <laughs> <laughs> the virus <laughs> suddenly disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's the point, is it? Can you actually say, well, clearly they weren't very well. That's why they didn't win. Brilliant. We've had a lot of fun and thank you for your company over the last month. What will your iconic image, do you think, be of this last four weeks? Um... Obviously, you, you said about me. I, I'd probably say I like seeing the Moroccan team do what they've done, get the mum, his mum on a picture, Kimi's mum on a picture. It's a nice, sweet moment for me. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. They did brilliantly. And for you, something from this evening? Messi kissing the trophy, yeah. walking past it. Incredible. Yeah, that felt good. I mean, that is, that, that is the photograph everyone is going to see. And, and I think forever associate with this World yeah. Cup, won't it? Iconic. Great ending mm. for a great player. Well done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I'm sure at home you have been picking your team of the tournament as well. We've had a little go and it's uh, open for debate to agree or vehemently disagree with as well. Actually, there are a couple of positions in here where I don't think necessarily there was a strong contender. Martinez in goal, there have been a few other goalkeepers. Uh, Gavardio, whatever Messi did to him, he had a very good championship, didn't he? Yeah. Excellent. Gavardio. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, there's your friend Hakimi there at right back. Left back and the other centre back, probably. You, much of a muchness, wasn't it, throughout the, the World Cup? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, listen, there was yeah. no, no real outstanding no. left back, but listen, yeah. they've won it. You shove him in there, I'm sure he'll do a job for the team. Yep. Amrabat, uh, he did brilliantly, didn't he? He, was he, he could get, He's a Fiorentina, he's a big club already, but could get an even bigger club. He was outstanding. Yeah. outstanding. I think if, if um, I know Chua Mane, done very, very well in here, but if, if Jude Bellingham was in there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too averse yeah. to that neither. No, absolutely. Griezmann had a quiet game, but maybe he was a bit under the weather, we <laughs> yeah. don't know. But I think the front four, I mean, Alvarez was... Ian, was it the, the, because Lautaro Martinez started the championship yeah. up front with Messi, yeah. playing Alvarez, Pep Guardiola said he thought he would be very good here, was a, was and he a was. really good move from Scaloni. It, it, yes, it was. Ran himself into the ground today as well, you know, done fantastically for the team. You know, another one that was brought in after the loss, you know, and he's stepped up to the plate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Didier Deschamps, he, he might move on now. Zinedine Zidane's linked with the job and actually said he wouldn't be here tonight. He didn't want to overshadow anything that France might do. If he does move on, three major finals since 2016 and one four years ago and an unbelievable conveyor belt of talent as well. You don't, could only think good things about what oh, he's done. Absolutely incredible performance from Deschamps. I mean, they, they epitomise him coming back in that game tonight. Um, he may have run his course. He may just have done enough. I mean, the tiring... I would imagine for him these last few years and I think that, that that game tonight he's been part of history I know he'll be devastated but he'll always look back upon that game as one that I think he'll recognise that was a great moment not just obviously for the game obviously for Lionel Messi but also for French football just to be part of it with Mbappe scoring that hat-trick He's got three three of his sons there at Messi enjoying the moment It's weird Ian when you read the, the press uh, even the French press Deschamps not lauded to the skies for what he's done. It's, it's quite hard to interpret what more he could have done to get unified no. love from the football no, community. As a, as, a, as a player, captain in his side to the World Cup, he's just uh, missed out on penalties to win it for the second time. I, I think that the, the water carrier um, you know, statement towards him or comments oh, towards him. Oh, Zanetti, you played against him, didn't you, in 98? Um, he was a hell of a player. Yeah. I thought that, yeah. the, that those were, were very disrespectful. You can see that you, you need those players in the team seen what he's gone on to do. It's going to be interesting to see if Zidane does come in, if he can replicate what he's done, because that is a magnificent effort from Deschamps. And I think he'll be looking at the next few months. They're in, they're playing Ireland in March in Dublin, so I think that might 
That's a bumpy landing. I think he'll be resigning looking at that game. <laughs> <laughs> he won't fancy that. In the Euro qualifying, as we said in Cordoba, Mendoza, everywhere in between. And Buenos Aires, of course. This is 1-0. Lovely afternoon in the Argentinian capital. They went through every range of emotion there, didn't they? 2-0, 2-2, 3-2, 3-3, 3-3 before they won it on penalties. And what a homecoming that will be. I don't think it's going to be that easy for the Premier League managers to try and get their players but you know, back. I just, sorry, I just, them images, they're so important because the, the, the families behind the players, listen, they sacrificed a lot. Now, I know it's great to see the great players, but the families, it's great to see them part of it yeah. because they played a huge part in supporting obviously uh, the player. And you were saying off air, obviously his family now, but his parents, he came to Messi, came to Spain when he was 13. Yeah. Not like uh, Maradona, who'd been born and bred in yeah. Argentina and very much one of them and playing club football well, in Argentina. He's for an Argentinian Well, team. remember, the, th the thing was, Messi going to, to Barcelona was a massive thing for them and it was a decision that he made and he didn't realise at the time that when he made the decision to go to Barcelona, he's going to have to leave off his family in Argentina. So he used to cry himself to sleep, but... I think they'll look at those images and see him with that iconic picture of him kissing the World Cup and realise it was worth it in the end. Sacrifices, isn't it? Absolutely. Sacrifices you have Absolutely. to make. Can you imagine that at 13, though? Yeah. So, yeah. he's done it. And, and I never quite him. know if he's going to do it. And then that whole situation that when he was playing for Argentina and they didn't win anything, mm. This is the truth. Some of the Argentinian fans weren't that convinced about him, were they, Gary? Because they thought he was as much Spanish as he was Argentinian. Well, just because of ev everything that he did with Barcelona was magical and it was seen as the greatest team of all time. And his focus was always Barcelona. And when he played for Argentina, obviously the results weren't the same, the football wasn't the same, the performances weren't the same. And that's been corrected tonight. But that's that, been corrected yeah. tonight. But that must have hurt him. You're talking about it's already been criticised on the football pitch. Yeah. If you're not playing well or you make mistakes, listen, that's the game we're in. But to be, have that thrown at him that he wasn't really one of theirs, that must have been really yeah. hurtful. So He's one of theirs this. now, let's absolutely. not worry about that. He, is he always was, he always was. Always was, but absolutely yeah. anybody who was a doubter. And for Lionel Scaloni, uh, well, two matches at a time, you can't direct the traffic and all that. <laughs> the Copa America and the World Cup. Yeah. He must be thinking, going, what do I do now? Exactly. Literally, what do I do now? Whatever he wants. In for a new contract? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever he wants, he's done it. He's, he's done what some of the greats will probably never do, and he's done it. He's done it very, very well with the way he's constructed that team around Messi. I'm delighted for him. Uh, England have won a trophy, I have to tell you that, in all that uh, presentation ceremony. They've won the fair play trophy. Yes. One yellow card. Mm. See? Maybe that's part of the problem, Gary. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being half serious. Well, yeah, look, I mean, we can't applaud teams that get too many yellow cards, but one does seem a little bit too, too nice. <laughs> You can be too nice in this game. Yeah. <laughs> England yeah. are too We just nice. didn't get booked. What, what, what's that got to do with us losing and that? You know what I mean? We just didn't get booked. I think it's a good thing. We no, saw the dog nice in place. Martinez at the end, didn't we, to win yeah. the game? Yeah. We absolutely saw the dog. <laughs> <laughs> been a great, it's been a great World Cup. As you said, whatever happened off the pitch, it's been a great World Cup on it, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, it has. absolutely. Been very, very long with these <laughs> lads here. But... <laughs> you went home for a week. It hasn't been that long. Can't wait to go home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Night for Argentina. Was it like the whole country holding their breath, Katie? Absolutely, the silence was deafening when they thought that they might even be losing this after so much uh, confidence. Everybody here is pouring out onto the streets of Buenos Aires, celebrating uh, their number 10, Lionel Messi, as well as the whole team, of course. This was just a, a victory that they only dared dream of, a victory that Argentina didn't just, just want to win. I think it needed to win. It's a country that's been battered economically, high inflation, people struggling month to month. People have told me crying that this World Cup meant so much to them. It brought Argentina together and, of course, they wanted it personally for Lionel Messi. But it's also brought together the whole of South America. Normally, footballing rivals such as Brazil, um, you know, they put down that rivalry and put it aside and have all been gunning for, for Argentina to win this and win the cup back from France. So this is a moment that people here don't want to, you know, don't want to forget. They want to be here celebrating until the early hours. Katie, thank you. Well, obviously very different sentiments in France. Uh, Lucy Williamson, our correspondent, is in um, Paris now. And of course, they were hoping to retain this trophy, Lucy.
This was meant to be such a big moment for France, wasn't it? And actually, you could have powered the country from the energy in this room tonight. Crowds of people also standing in the freezing rain outside all the bars here, watching through the windows, breaking into spontaneous renditions of the national anthem. A pretty grim first half, it has to be said, but the mood really picked up in the second half, a feeling that the momentum might ultimately be with France. Of course, it wasn't, but they did put up quite a battle. Kylian Mbappe, 23 years old, three goals and a penalty goal. France might no longer be champions of the world tonight, but I'll bet that Kylian Mbappe is still the champion of France. Lucy, thank you very much. Lucy Williamson there. And let's go back now to Dan Rowan, our sports editor, because tonight, Dan, it's not only about this final, though it was a remarkable moment, but also the end of this entire tournament. And as you look back on it, how do you think we'll remember Qatar 2022? Well, it will be remembered, I think, as Lionel Messi's World Cup and his final, this pursuit of the one major trophy to elude him until now has come to define this wonderful footballer and it is simply a fantastic story isn't it ultimately that he's managed to achieve it in this his final World Cup for many it will mean that he enters the pantheon of all-time greats alongside Pele and Maradona and ends any debate over whether or not he was the best of his generation and of course this will all be welcomed by the Qatari host because it does help to reinforce the sense of a very entertaining and groundbreaking World Cup. The first, of course, in the Middle East and in winter. There's been some fantastic matches, no least, of course, the final itself. And it will mean that many people remember it for that match rather than the huge controversy in the build-up over human rights and the deaths of migrant workers, concerns over discriminatory laws and the possible environmental impact. There will be many who, regardless of what happened here this evening, always feel that the World Cup shouldn't have taken place here. But remember, both Messi and Mbappe are teammates at Paris Saint-Germain, a club owned by Qatar. And so the hosts, I think, ultimately, thanks in large part to tonight, will feel that they've won alongside Argentina. Dan, thank you.